are celebrating Women's History Month. Uh, sometimes we've just come off, of course, Black History Month. As you, so often you hear, do we need to have this? It's, it's this relevant now. Uh, I think certainly, and even more so in today's environment, these markers are critical uh, because there is so much discussion about what uh, laws, etc., that will impact women's lives. And uh, we, of course, having this kind of uh, observance makes us more aware. And of course, we know to react and get out and march and do whatever it takes to keep the, the whole spirit alive. Well, I'm really quite flattered to be here today as, um, as one of the women that was chosen to be part of this um, great event that's being held here today by Newcastle County. Um, I've been with Girls in the Run for 11 years. Uh, Girls in the Run is an after-school program for girls in third, fourth, and fifth grade. Um, it's an empowerment program that uses running as a tool to teach girls life lessons. Um, we talk about gossiping, we talk about bullying, we talk about community, the importance of giving back to community. And what we really hope is to give girls the tools to be comfortable in their own skin, to use their voice to stand up for themselves. So as these girls that are 8, 9, and 10, and 11 approach adolescence, they're, they're confident, they're strong, they're, they're able to stand up for what they know is right, say, say no to what they know is not right, and, and hopefully grow into powerful, amazing, strong, confident women. Um, the Girl Scouts of the Chesapeake Bay cover the whole Delmarva Peninsula. We have just about 13,000 girls and volunteers. The importance of Girl Scouting today cannot be measured. Girls need it more than ever. And we have our new saying, which is, we are, girls are go-getters, innovators, risk-takers, and leaders. That's what girls do today, and that's what we need girls to do. And they need to learn to try a variety of different things to help them build those skills. Uh, for me, I have been a Girl Scout my whole life. I started up in uh, Massachusetts. I was very fortunate to be able to go all through Girl Scouting. I was a volunteer, I was a leader, I was on the board. And when I came to Delaware, I looked to find the council that I could volunteer. I'm a banker by trade, and I am a banker because of Girl Scouting. Girl Scouting helped me develop my confidence and my ability to push forward and not settle. I want other girls to have that opportunity today more than ever. This month is Women's History Month. Women's History Month. I actually celebrate Women's History every month because my mom makes me. Um, but it is important that we come together uh, to recognize uh, women who both helped us as a society to get uh, to where we are today, and also recognize those women in our community now who are helping us to go where we need to go. There are a lot of girls here, which I love. A lot of girls here. Let's give all the girls who showed up today a round of applause. It's so important that as we, I hope everybody gets a chance to go over in the other room to, to learn about past leaders, people like Indira Gandhi and Shirley Chisholm, who played such a critical role in moving our society and our communities across the country, really across the world, forward. Uh, Shirley Chisholm was, I believe, the, the, first, um, the first female presidential candidate, or Shirley got more support than any presidential candidate before, and it's important that we learn from her, and particularly the girls in here, the younger girls, you can look and understand the life that she lived, and understand that that can be you. That can be you. You can look right here at Newcastle County, at our state, at our country, and imagine how it can be a better place, and as long as you have a voice, you can get your voice out there, and you can be just like someone like Shirley Chisholm, or Indira Gandhi. The confidence that I gained at Girl Scouting, took me on a path where I always challenge myself, but I always challenge others. What do you mean I can't be a head teller? Of course I can. 
and I was. What do you mean I can't be a loan officer? Of course I can, and I was. What do you mean I can't be a branch manager? Of course I can, and I was. Being headhunted by MBA and then going to England to help with the startup of the European operations turned out to be one humongous challenge. First, I was an American. Yeah. I talked funny, no matter where I came from. But most importantly, I was a woman in a male-dominated world. Banking in England, oof. Well, do you think that stopped me? Of course not. I became the first and only woman on the European Senior Operating Committee for the bank. And I was the bank's representative to the British Banking Society in London. The first time I walked in, this gentleman said to me, whose PA are you? <laughs> I won't tell you what I said, because it's girls in the house. <laughs> but you know, I look back on the road that my life took. And clearly, Girl Scouting made the difference. Building those skills of confidence, whoa. I could do anything. Eh, fell a few times, eh, that's OK. <clears throat> that's part of learning. You learn by experiencing. And I certainly had lots of experiences that I learned. But now, as the CEO of the Girl Scouts at Chesapeake Bay, I want to ensure that every girl has the opportunity to develop their courage, their confidence, their character. We need girls today more than ever. They are our leaders for tomorrow. They will make a difference in our communities, in our state, and in our country. Girls on the Run strives to create a world where every girl knows and activates her limitless potential. Girls on the Run strives to create a generation of girls who are strong, confident, and healthy, who will express joy, optimism, and gratitude through their words, thoughts, and actions. Girls on the Run hopes girls will lead with open hearts and assume positive intent. All of these core values that Girls on the Run is built on and works to instill in all our participant, participants are the same core values that I try to live by on a daily basis and instill in my daughters. So I say to all of you, when you think about what you may want to do in your life today, tomorrow, in the future, I suggest you find something that you enjoy, something you believe in, something that you care about, and do it because you want to do it, and do it from the heart. Don't necessarily do something for your resume. Don't necessarily do it just because your friends are doing it. Don't necessarily do it just because your parents tell you to do it, well, unless, of course, it's joining the Girl Scouts. <laughs> but be true to yourself. Be comfortable in your own skin. Pursue, pursue what is important to you. And equally as important, be sure to have fun along the way. If you do that, the rest of it will take care of itself. Do you know about Martin Luther King? 
uh, here um, uh, and then uh, just sort of superficial ones. So it is important that our young people know a little about the history of Women's History Month and why we are uh, taking time to celebrate. <laughs> We're very excited about this time and Matt touched on this. Uh, but you know, the truth is, we really should not need a designated month to remind us of the importance of women in history and in our daily lives. Just as we should not need a month to remind us of the significant contributions made by the African Americans uh, when we pause to observe Black History Month. But the state of our nation now makes these annual markers even more critical at this point in time. Many currently fear women's rights are in jeopardy, and decades of advancement could be impacted. Hey. When the glory comes, it will be out. sandwich, and he crumbled it to the ground. 
that young woman reached into her pocket. She pulled up and held forth a delicate pinned egg. And then the king said, that's it. Go tell your people they are free of me. You have won. But the king went back to his kingdom. His wife and soldiers wanted to hear the victory story. When he told them he had lost, they were shocked. And they wanted to hear every detail of what happened. The king said, they brought forth this woman. And I challenged her to a silent debate. I held up two fingers as if to say, there are two gods, one in heaven and me reigning here on earth. And she held up a finger as if to say, there is but one creator of all life. Then I threw up an open hand as if to say, you will never know unity or harmony in your village ever again. And she threw up one fist as if to say, we will always be united as one people. Then I reached into my pocket, put out a molded decrepit sandwich and crumbled it to the ground to signify that there will always be decay and ruin among this generation of your people and every generation thereafter. And she reached into her pocket and poured forth a delicate hint egg as if to say, there will always be new life. Well, in the village where the Psalms of Ada happened, and that young woman was victorious. Well, they were having a party, y'all. They were getting down. They were having a party. The men had returned. They were having a good time. Then this little baby, you know how children are always, children are always speaking the truth, right? I go, okay. this little baby came forward and said to the woman who was in the debate, she said, excuse me, I was in the back, and I couldn't see and I don't know what happened. Can you tell me? Can you tell me what happened, ma'am? And the young woman said, of course I can, child. It would be my delight. Well, see, the king, he came forward and challenged me to a silent debate. And he held out two fingers, child, like he was going to poke me in my eye. And I called up one in the bathroom to say, Joe, you better back up. Thank y'all for listening.